vegetables, you will lose the excess fat on your body, but you won't go like anorexic looking is what I'll call it. Um, that just won't happen. Look at all this orange juice. Nutrition by Victoria. I've actually been wanting to talk about her, but I really haven't had time to get to her. And so this is going to be really quick. Actually, I may take a break for a little bit to work on videos that, you know, require a little more research. So I have to put in just a little time every day on those. Uh, yeah, but Victoria, she has evolved. She's changed tremendously over this time she's been vegan. And um, I want to say she's close to my age, um, 35 this year, so... I don't think quite my age. I would say she's probably about 30, something like that. But uh, I won't point out her, you know, problems with breathing. Vegan phobic has pointed that out. Vegan deterioration has shown some of it. And I was telling vegan deterioration, I was telling her, Shara, that I think it could be uh, anemia, either like B12, you can be folate, you can have anemia from folate, you can... It could be iron, but, you know, if the blood cells are not getting enough oxygen, the body could be trying to make up for this by gasping. You know, it could be just like a, a response. Her body's just, you know, trying to get more air to these blood cells. So that could be it. It could be the, uh, I think, vegan phobic mentioned. The diaphragm could be weakened, and this can be due to long-term malnutrition you know, uh, eating disorders like anorexia, things like that, that would cause this sort of thing. But that's not really what I wanted to even talk about. I wanted to talk about the composition of her body. It's really intriguing to me because, oh, she's very, very proud. She's very proud of her body. She, at the beginning of every video, she'll pull down her pants, like really lo as low as they can go. To show her full stomach. She doesn't want to just show like the belly button <laughs> up. To show everything. She wants to show it all. And she thinks she looks amazing. She talks about how she feels amazing. I gained almost 60 pounds. And then now to date I've probably lost about 40 of that. Um, but healthfully. I'm not underweight at all. I am healthy. She talks about how you can have a baby on a really high carb diet, several babies, and <laughs> be so healthy you can, you know, get your period back immediately. You can gain the weight back. Your kids can be healthy, eating no overt fats, like 10% fat. So, oh my goodness, I'm not even going to get into all that. What I wanted to talk about is her fat composition. And so, I think Stephanie Buttermore is a good example of someone, well, she's in the gym a lot, so she's obviously, even her fat is going to be a little more firm, I guess you could say, than typical fat people or any, like, excess fat you have on your body. And I'm not saying she's fat. <laughs> she's definitely not fat. She probably looks about like me. But um, if you look at Victoria, her fat composition, look at her arms. And then her waist. And it almost doesn't match up. And this is really odd to me. Because she said she was on the bike that one morning. About 80 minutes. She's working out every day. Like as soon as she wakes up. She do goes and does cardio. Granted she doesn't weight lift. Like Stephanie Buttermore. But I don't really weight lift a lot. I do some workouts. And. Yeah, the fat I have on my body, it feels firm, like there's a firmness to it. And I think there's something to this. Just watch her arm. It doesn't look like she... It, it doesn't match her body. It like jiggles. So, I'm wondering about this. What is the... um? It's almost like weak fat. Like her fat composition. Her fat... Is this, does this mean there's no nutrition in it? <laughs> like if she were starving to death and she had to live off the fat of her own body, what would it do for her? I guess that's what I'm wondering. And so if you look at her face, even like her cheeks, it's all starting to droop. Look at her arm. 
underneath, it's starting to droop. It's like a weak, sickly fat. I get that people age. I mean, this is not even what I'm talking about, so I don't want someone to, you know, explain that to me that women get older, you know, people get older, and, you know, your body isn't holding up the way it used to be. I get that. This is not typical, and this is what Shar points out, like, every day on her channel. But, yeah, it's the skinny fat we notice within this community, but I wanted to talk about her because I think this is the most extreme case of skinny fat I've ever seen. So that Dr. Greger did um, with NutritionFacts.org talking about what happens when people eat 20 plus servings of fruit a day and vegetables. Uh, they had the largest recorded bowel movements. These people lost weight without having to um, count their calories. So a lot of benefits to eating a large amount of fruits and vegetables. I'll put a link for that video in the description. Just kidding. You know I can't leave it there. <laughs> I had to go and look, uh, I don't even know if you can see this, and I'll link the um, actual research paper in the description if anybody wants to look at any of these. But this study right here, I had to go look in, at the fat composition and see what I could find out. So, as you can see, uh, saturated fat is most of the fat that typical humans would have on their body. And since there isn't a lot of studies, surprisingly, of, uh, you know, cutting apart humans and looking at their fat composition, I did find plenty on pigs and, you know, swine. We have a lot in common with them as far as, like, DNA goes. So, I thought, well, um, our fat composition should be similar, or we should at least get an idea of, you know, what the firmness says about it. So, sure enough, the firmness of fat actually has something to do with whether your fat is made out of, you know, mostly linoleic acid or it's basically saturated fat and plant fat. Okay, so if you're eating a lot of plant fat, and I mentioned this before, and as a matter of fact, Freely talks about this. She talks about if you're eating animals, they can find it in the fat in your body. Yeah. That's a good thing. You know, we want our fat made out of saturated fat. Well, both. But, you know, there are many different essential fatty acids. So, but it's the saturated fat that give that firmness. You know, the jiggly, loose, hanging fat is going to be the plant fat for the most part. So, I'm just going to read some of this. Hardness of pork fat plays an important role. And pork quality, fat hardness is directly controlled by the fatty acid composition of the fat. And so the physiology, hardness of pork fat is directly related to the ratio of saturated fat and polyunsaturated fatty acids. So the fat containing a high proportion of saturated fatty acids are solid at room temperature. And this is um, a given, you know, like the liquid stuff is unsaturated. And so they're less stable, obviously. So this ratio and the resultant fat hardness is heavily influenced by the ratio of linoleic acid, steric acid. And so the acceptable firmness should contain only 12 to 15 percent linoleic acid and 41 percent saturated fatty acid. It goes on to talk about how genetically lean pigs are fed vegetable-based diets and will tend to possess softer fat. And, yeah, they go on to say what, you know, how you should feed the pigs. So, yeah, the obviously more stable fat is saturated. And you can also see this in human breast milk. Um, vegetarian, vegan breast milk seems to have a higher plant fat content than omnivorous mother breast milk. So, there's also, in the study, they found the iodine was different, you know, depending on how weak the fat was or if the person was sick or diseased, it would have less iodine. So I don't know how that correlates. And I'm sure also, uh, like I was saying, exercise, you know, muscle strength training, things like that would give your fat uh, a more solid, a firmer composition in general. So yeah, this is pretty interesting. I'd like to actually look further into this 
but what to make of it if you want strong muscles a strong body strong fat even you need to eat nourishing foods saturated fat even monounsaturated fat i wouldn't go for the more processed plant fats the you know the less stable ones like polyunsaturated but you can't just eat carbs and assume your body will handle all this for you. It will turn everything into the best possible form for you.